What's going on, 93.7 The Ticket? We are back here with another episode here at the University of Nebraska Memorial Stadium where I, Nico Schultz, on the Nico Schultz at Night podcast interview one athlete for you guys five a week. Here tonight with me, I have your very own McKaylin Moore, the Colorado native, triple jumper, long jumper, who has scored a numerous amount of points for us at the Big Ten Championships, been a huge asset to the track and field team. So let me ask you, McKaylin, how are you feeling about being on the show tonight, my man? Man, I'm excited. Long time coming. I've been asking this dude to put me on for so long. We're finally here making it happen, and let's get it going. Let's get it going, man, for the show. We're going to go ahead and start with this first question I love to ask all of my all of my guests, which is, why the University of Nebraska? It's mm. a loaded question, Nico. A uh, couple of people. Whew. So in high school, when I was getting recruited, my coach was like, Hey, Nebraska called. They would, they're wondering if you're interested and they want your information, whatever. And I was like, Nebraska? I was like, I never heard of Nebraska track. Like, that was never something that I really even considered growing up or anything like that. And so I started talking to Coach, came on a visit, and it absolutely blew me away with all the resources and all the facilities and just the opportunities that they had here. And, uh, Little did I know that they had an Olympic level coach as well who had coached many Olympians and national champions. And so that was really the main thing that sold me is getting the opportunity to work with someone like him. And so that's kind of how I came here. And then just the academic resources as well. Uh, I knew that I was going to be able to thrive academically and hopefully achieve all of my goals that I had set at the time. McKaylin, as you mentioned before, Olympic level coach for for everyone who doesn't know out there, he was actually talking about Coach Gary Pepin. Coach Gary Pepin recently here retired within this last year, and uh, he was a phenomenal coach, amazing guy as well. Um, he's been here since about I think the seventies. He's just you know led this program to be just super elite, super legendary career he had here, and to be under the wing and to even just be coached by him. You see, I'm an 800 meter runner. McKaylin's a jumper here, and so just being in the presence of Coach Pepin was just amazing. Uh, McKaylin, talking more about what you mentioned before, just being blown away by the facilities, and you are the class of 2019, correct? Correct. So you were here when the 2020 crisis went down. You were already in college. So can you go ahead and describe to the people what was that like? Because I think you were a freshman, right? Yeah, I was a freshman. He was a freshman this entire thing went down so go ahead and describe to the people what it was like three years ago being at the university where everything was shut down what you had to do for a training table your classes everything because no i don't think people know what how hard it hit the college athletes so go ahead and fill them in all right all right that's a good question so when i came here went through the fall as normal until about october i actually had a knee injury and decided to get surgery and so that year i was actually planning on redshirting that indoor season and so I got my surgery and I had a couple of procedures in October and November. And so I uh, decided to redshirt that freshman indoor season and then was preparing to come back outdoors. And just randomly, they just said, yo, there's a disease going around. Like we might be shutting things down. Everybody's like, what? <laughs> and everybody started leaving school, but we were still training and it was kind of confusing. And so next thing we knew, we weren't even allowed to practice. And so I was like, what? But then ultimately it ended up being like the biggest blessing for me because I had a whole year to train, get healthy again and come back and really get the whole experience without actually using any of my eligibility. And so that I think really helped me progress to where I was and uh, for the following year. Going back to that as well, you know, you getting injured or even having that whole entire COVID thing go down, that's actually the reason you're here now too because if you didn't, you know, get injured or have that COVID season, you'd probably already be graduated or on your way out because you're currently in your fifth year. So it was a blessing in disguise because now we're coming off that Big Ten championship season. Go ahead and throw two more rings on those fingers before he's on his way out. Hopefully that's what we're, we're, we're pushing for this upcoming NCAA season. Trophies. NCAA trophy. They're not even ready for what's to come in the future. Saying, so, McKayla, my next point I want to get into here. So, if there's any, any athlete who here that I know is well put together on the track, on whatever sport they do, but also in the classroom, it's this man right here. He goes super hard when it comes to his academics. He's always doing labs. He's always working on homework. He never goes to any of the parties. He's the, he's the type of guy to be up late Saturday night grinding on his homework and up early doing a workout, man. So, uh, McKayla, for, for any of the people out there, go ahead to talk about well, what it takes to be a scholar here in Nebraska, not just being a good athlete, but what it means to be a successful student in the classroom. Yeah, man. So a lot of people ask me, like, 
how I do it or like how I even stay motivated to continue putting so much effort into my schoolwork. And I always say like, when things get hard, think about where you want to be one day, right? And so when I think about it, I'm like, I want to, I know that I want to be financially stable. I know that I want certain things in life. I want to be able to travel when I'm older. I want to be able to do whatever my family needs. And so I'm like, I'm willing to take that sacrifice, that pain and stay up an extra two hours, two, three hours, sacrifice going to hang out with my friends in order to make sure that I can get to where I want to be one day. And so I think that's really the main thing that pushes me. And, you know, I'm really driven into meeting my goals. When I set myself up for something, I'm doing everything I can to get there because I'm not satisfied until I meet that. So I think that's really what has kept me going. Can you tell the people what it is you do? Yeah, so I'm a biological sciences major with a quadruple minor in chemistry, biochemistry, humanities, medicine, and psychology. And one day I hope to be a physician, so I'm a pre-medicine student here as well. Pre-med on top of being an all Big Ten athlete. So for anybody who doesn't know out there, in extremely difficult even if it, he was just a normal athletic regular person it would still be extremely difficult to keep up the academic standard that he holds on top of that he's out there killing it on the track day in day out you know his coach follows a very specific regimen where they're up early in the morning getting after it sometimes they're up later in the day getting after it throughout the day and you know it's it's really difficult to keep up with everything especially if you're getting behind and this man right here if there's anybody who's on top of the work is always on their game it's this dude right here man he's he's always just looking towards the future as he, as he said before he's always motivated because he knows where he wants to get to he's willing to give up the fun times and sacrifice the now for what he can get in the future so i think that's a really strong message for any athlete out there who who want to be not only a d1 athlete but a good d1 athlete a successful d1 athlete in both the classroom and on the field so, Mikaelin, going off of that, what is the most difficult part of your day-to-day -day process? What's your biggest struggle? It could be athletic. It could be personal. It could be academic. What is the biggest kind of just your struggle on a day-to-day -day basis? Yeah. Uh, hmm. That's a good question. Biggest struggle has got to be Coach Johnson's military training. I'm telling you. <laughs> Nico was not lying when he said we wake up early, we get after it, 6.30 a.m. almost every morning, hit the weight room hard take a little break, you come back and hit it hard again in the afternoon. And it, this fall training is no joke. I say physically, obviously, that's the hardest part. Uh, mentally, I mean, things like you got a whole life going on outside of sports, so that can get tricky. But for me, I think the biggest thing is like I wake up every day and I always have a positive attitude, right? I never let outside situations try and get to me because at the end of the day, you're in control of that. You got as Deion Sanders I actually took this from Deion Sanders, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give him his uh, Colorado. Yeah, I'm gonna give him <laughs> his credit here. But basically, he said like, he said you have the remote control to your life, and um, you don't give that to somebody else. Nobody else has the power to turn you up, turn you down, change the color of your day. That's on you. And that really resonated with me. And so every time I'm feeling down or like I'm like, dang, this isn't going well. Now I got control of like you got moments in the day you got seconds in the day and those hard times don't last every moment of the day so you got to make the most of every other bit of it because life keeps on moving and so yeah there's something you said that i absolutely love you said keeping you waking up every morning with a pma if this dude knows he has three tests in the day, he has a 6 a.m. workout on top of an afternoon workout, he's still attacking in full head of steam knowing he has a PMA because he wants to get somewhere in the future. That message right there is, is super strong. Like I said, there's not many guys cut from the same cloth as McKaylin here, so I don't know what they're feeding him down in Colorado, man, but he's getting after it. Um, as I said before, too, not only is he just good a good track, track and field athlete right here, this is the only guy I've ever seen in person throw a turkey in bowling. For, for those of you who don't know what a turkey is, it's three strikes in a row. In a row. Uh, me and this dude, we, you know, we're not the best golfers, but we be messing around on the golf course sometimes, too. So, like I said, being a D1 athlete, man, you're good at your sport, but you're also good at random things, too. So, Michaela, go ahead and tell the people um, what do you like to do for fun out here in Nebraska? So, like I said, you have your, 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 your day job, technically, between school between track but if you ever have a free moment for some free time what do you like to do for fun and first and foremost nico roll the clip roll the clip, roll the clip. we got it all on video the turkey is on video it was to save the game keep us in the game we clutched up at the end didn't necessarily go our way but 
But we definitely did our thing on that night. That was crazy. I know it was crazy. <laughs> um, but anyways, what I like to do for fun here. So I think, I think the biggest like stress reliever is just hanging out with friends. I mean, it doesn't necessarily matter what I do as long as like I can get my mind off of practice, off of school for a little bit. I enjoy doing it. So like that could look like going to the golf course, or that could just look like going to a friend's house and just hanging out and all talking, like something simple as that. I'm a pretty social person. I love to talk. I love to get out, meet new people. And so any opportunity that I have to do that, I'm all in. Oh, and the other thing, Nico and I love to volunteer. You <laughs> speak on that. But uh, any opportunities that we get, we sign up because we love giving back to our community because the community does so much for us. And uh, that is actually something that I think I've found most enjoyable here being at Nebraska and all those opportunities to get out there, influence people, impact others, and empower others for sure. You hear the man right here, very social person, loves to get out, take the stress off. It's, it's Sometimes in life, it's the little things, too. Just going out, talking to people. I mean, you could be having a terrible day, compliment one friend on something, and that changes everything. You know, just talking to one person, having that one conversation. And as you said before, love to volunteer. Uh, I've always seen this man going out volunteering, man. He's always hosting these events, too. He's always hosting seminars where the entire athletic program comes together and, you know, discussing his stories, like, like powerful movements. And it's, it's super inspiring stuff, man. So having somebody in the, in the athletic department that's just very well-rounded in all aspects, you know, success, some people measure it just upon athletic performance. But for me personally, I measure success in all different all different aspects and variations of life. If you're good, if you're a good person, if you're a good dad, brother, sister, really just everything, I think that being whole and just different areas and not just in one that's really to me what success looks like so Michaela man keep it up bro I hope Appreciate you accomplish it. everything that you know you set out to do this year and hoping to add two more rings to where we are finger this year before we send you on your way brother so awesome this was the Nico and I podcast stay tuned this is Michaela Moore if you ever see him say what's up at the next track meet and we're out of here peace Appreciate it.